What is Radeon Anti-Lag? A question that I think has plugged most people from its conception. AMD hasn't been abundantly clear on how it works. And even when you look on their website, they, they have this blurb right here. And I'm gonna be honest with you, after testing it over and over and over again, I think AMD's kind of lying about how sophisticated this stuff really is. So let's talk about it right after the intro. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie and you are watching Greater Than Pi. We're talking about Radeon Anti-Lag by AMD. <laughs> and today we're gonna actually go through our testing and our tested methodology for this because uh, our findings are kind of interesting. So to test, we're actually playing the game Borderlands 3, which is actually even on AMD's website as a game that supports its features fully. And our test system is our pretty standard Supernova. Now, if you've never heard of this system, it's because the videos for it actually got a lot less views than Dark Matter, and Dark Matter was the problematic system. Supernova is my fully tricked out, water-cooled system with a 5700 XT and a Ryzen 9 3900X. Yes, that CPU is not exactly the best gaming CPU because it's a little bit overkill. But this is my editing and gaming and all around system that I intended to be built and not touched for years to come. And unfortunately, I do want to upgrade it already. But with that out of the way, uh, let's actually start talking about our testing. So our first bit of testing was actually the benchmark that is built into Borderlands 3. Now the benchmark isn't vindicative of gaming performance necessarily. In fact, I found that it's usually around 10 frames per second off, even the hardest to render areas in the game. We're actually gonna be testing on my favorite part of the map to actually test, which is this gigantic futuristic cityscape, um, which honestly just, it's one of the harder areas, lots of vehicles, lots of things going on. And unlike the actual dunes of Pandora, the added geometry does make it a much more difficult area to benchmark in. So going through our benchmark results, we actually saw something pretty interesting. Without anti-lag on, we were seeing anywhere between 70 to 60 frames per second in the benchmark with small dips into the 58 frames per second range. This was on high, mind you, with all of the eye candy turned on. The only other settings are ultra and ultra badass past that. And uh, those will much greater strain your system than even the high settings. But when we turn on anti-lag, things got interesting. We dropped down to 60 to those upper 50 frames per second, meaning we actually ended up dropping about 10 frames per second in the benchmark. This is actually where the title of this video comes in, that Radeon Anti-Lag will cost you some frames per second. But I'm not telling you to turn it off and never turn it on because gameplay is a slightly different story. We tested Anti-Lag, Radeon Boost, and Default. From here though, it was pretty simple. We ran around the map, we shot some things with the sniper rifle because sniper rifles require the most accuracy and flick shooting and all that good stuff that we come to know and love about these kind of tests. And this is gonna be a slightly subjective test because well, this kind of feature is a slightly subjective feature. <laughs> when it comes down to it, the snappiness and response time is something you can track with some specialized pieces of hardware that NVIDIA does make, but I'm not lying as tech tips and I don't have it. So we're gonna have to go with the good old feely clicky test. That sounds so wrong, but we're rolling with it. <laughs> uh, our results are actually opposite of what they were in our benchmark, where the default provided a higher frame rate it had a bit of a middle of the road response time. Our lowest response time actually came from Radeon Boost with a noticeable difference between click and action happening. Radeon Anti-Lag though, it does work. I can feel it working. Like the response is insane and it's just amazing. But I wasn't really quite happy with it because why does this work? 
I mean, if we're going off of AMD's logic, this is some sort of a smart scheduler, but the scheduling doesn't change the fact that the GPU worked just as hard, the CPU was working just as hard, and our VRAM was actually slightly higher when anti-lag was on. It's almost as if the GPU was working harder to run anti-lag. But while I had my suspicions, I wanted to test further. So we lowered the settings down to medium. This actually gave us an average frame rate anywhere between 180 frames per second. More frames means more opportunity to see a difference between when it's working and when it's not. This time, our standard version actually had a noticeable amount of lag to it, almost where Radeon Boost was prior. And I hadn't really noticed this before while playing this game, but I also wasn't really looking for it. So then I turned on anti-lag and it went back to the same kind of response time that it had before, again, dropping down five to 10 frames per second. But it's still doing better than standard when it comes to the responsiveness, which is peculiar. So what is really going on? Because I don't think AMD is telling the truth here. Now, what we know from the data is that anti-lag works. It does improve the responsiveness. We know that it takes a bit of a hit on frame rate. Anywhere between 10 to 5 frames per second seems to be the average in which you do get impacted. But there are some weird variables in here. Our GPU utilization and CPU utilizations stay exactly the same across the board. But our VRAM usage does go up, which is odd because why would our graphics card need to use more memory? And that's, that's where a bit of speculation on my part comes in. You see, I don't think anti-lag works the way AMD says it does. I mean, I do think it's a smart scheduler, but I think that it's actually a lot more impressive than they are letting on. AMD anti-lag, in my personal opinion, most likely is a much more advanced algorithm than just talking to the CPU and letting it know, hey, I can't render more frames. I think the GPU is rendering some frames in its data ahead of time. I know that sounds kind of weird and it doesn't sound like that would result in less frames per second, but imagine this. Your GPU renders 80 frames per second, right? When you turn on anti-lag, it drops down to 70. Where did those 10 frames go? Right? Well, what if I told you that anti-lag dumps some of those frames intentionally in order to actually have a faster response time? Now, it's not maliciously dumping frames. In fact, actually, I noticed when looking down the scope of the gun, the frame rate almost appeared to skip more frames than when it was not. I noticed that when I fired, it was instant, but it almost snapped to that point. It's almost as if the GPU is rendering everything out and then once an action that the, some sort of magical mystic smoke inside the GPU is doing, flag something as essential, as an action that would be a reaction, then it moves that frame ahead of other frames and just skips a couple frames so that it appears to happen instantly. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but it's honestly from what I've seen and what I've reviewed in my testing appears to be how it actually works. But it's pretty cool. Now, I guess the next question is, should you use it all the time? No, don't. Don't turn it on and forget about it. There is a time and place for every single one of these features, and I've hoped that this video series would teach you about that. Radeon Anti-Lag should not be used in games that are specifically designed to be more cinematic in general. And I have personally found that it has almost no impact in games that are third person. The one genre of games that this seems to work best with are first person shooters. And it's not even all of them. For example, Doom is a pretty good example of a game that is buttery smooth all the time. The games that do actually benefit would be things like Call of Duty, 
Borderlands 3. Um, Battlefront, if you are still playing with that. Battlefield. Games where a competitive edge is necessary. But games like Monster Hunter or um, Devil May Cry, the aforementioned Doom, Elder Scrolls Online, another favorite of mine, all of those games don't necessarily benefit as much from it and it ends up being unnecessary as in those games something like Radeon Boost ends up being more beneficial because the smoother the action the smoother the movement the better it looks higher frame rate plus consistent frame rate equals better than skipping frame rates in order to have instantaneous reactions it's a trade-off with anti-lag you're trading off frames for response time. And when it comes down to it, when those aren't a factor, when response time isn't as important, that's when it should be off. There are some games that I would never turn it on for. I've used Muse Dash a lot on this channel. Any rhythm game of that type is one that you don't want to that. You don't want the frame rate jumping around in a rhythm game. like. The timing is important, and in order to get the timing right, it needs to be exactly where you would predict it to be. In the end, it is a useful feature, specifically for first-person shooters. But that's probably where it should end. But that is where we are going to end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing. We still have one Ambi feature left to talk about and that is FSR. Now I've already talked a little bit about it and how it can relate to VR and VR modding, but I do want to get some native FSR games in studio to test and actually talk about. Because believe it or not, FSR and virtual super resolution actually, so there's two more features, are an interesting beast altogether. So if you're not subscribed, get subscribed to that. We'll be talking about Linux stuff, more PC stuff, this is yeah i've got a secret for you guys this entire video i have been using fsr for all of that gameplay yes every single clip of gameplay in this used fsr we're going to talk about it real soon on this channel i just wanted to let you in on the secret for those of you guys who are loyal enough to stay to the end of the video thank you so much i really appreciate you guys just subscribe, enjoy the randomness. I try things all over the place. And if you have a suggestion for a video, always leave it down in the comments below because that is where I actually get a lot of my inspiration for videos. So thank you guys again. Wolfie, out.